Here at Catholic Family Podcast, we intend to record and publish the life story of Bishop Moises Carmona as written by Father Daniel A. Perez Gomez of the Trento Society in Mexico. That is in the works. We intend to have that published here in the coming months. Uh, say a prayer that that happens. It is, it is quite the project, and um, we, we need as much help as we can get. In the meantime, I am going to read a fitting um, post from a good friend of mine, a good good friend of the show, Mr. Stephen Spurray, and that's on stephenspurray.wordpress.com, a blog I highly recommend to anyone and everyone. And this blog is called Bishop Moises Carmona's Defense of His Episcopal Consecration. So he's defending his own consecration and those consecrations made by Archbishop Took. And so again, as we wait for the progress of our completing his full life story, we will go briefly now through something written by um, Stephen Spurray, but taken mostly from a letter written by His Excellency Bishop Carmona himself. So please, again, go check out Stephen Spray's blog. I highly recommend it. Can't recommend it enough. Good guy, good Catholic, good blog. And again, right now, I'll be reading Bishop Moises Carmona's defense of his own Episcopal consecration written by Stephen Spurray. The Congregatio Mariae Regina Immaculate, or the CMRI, and Bishop Iverunas published long ago Bishop Carmona's defense of his Episcopal consecration. Bishop Carmona's letter explains the legitimacy and validity of Episcopal consecrations without a papal mandate. Bishop Carmona was once a seminary professor who, with the help of Father Joaquin Sanz Ariaga and Bishop Zamora, formed the Unio Católica Trento. Bishop Carmona founded the major seminary of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary in Hermosilla, Sonora, Mexico, owned by the Sociedad Sacerdoto Trento, the Priestly Society of Trent, which is now headed by Bishop Martin Davila Gandara. Father Joaquin Sainz Ariaga was a Mexican theologian who held doctorates in sacred theology, philosophy, and canon law. When Mexican Cardinal Miranda declared Father Sainz Ariaga excommunicated in 1972, Father Moises Carmona wrote, quote, They excommunicated you for your fidelity to Christ, his teachings, and his church. Blessed excommunication, as long as it is for this reason, may all such excommunications come upon me, unquote. Bishop Moises Carmona was killed in a car accident on All Saints Day 1991. He had just consecrated Mark Piverunas as bishop on September 24th of that same year. Five years later, Bishop Carmona's body was transferred to a crypt in a lower chapel below Divina Providencia Church. There are pictures of his body when laid in the crypt. His body showed no signs of decomposition and looked the same as his funeral. Bishop Carmona's Letter my dear and true friend, in answering your letter, I ought to tell you the following. It is clear that in normal circumstances, no bishop can consecrate licitly another bishop, but we are presently living in circumstances that are not at all normal, since they constitute a most unusual case for which nothing is clearly legislated. Three things characterize our present situation. Number one, since the death of Pius XII, we have had but impostors, which means that for over twenty years the Holy See has been vacant. Number two, almost the entire episcopacy has embarked upon a new religion and has therefore apostatized from the true faith, renouncing the eternal church. Number three, the true faithful hunger for the word of God that is no longer being preached to them, and they are asking of us the administration of the Catholic sacraments. At first, we placed our hopes on Archbishop Lefebvre, in whom we saw a true Catholic bishop, a defender of the true faith with whom the legitimate apostolic succession would continue. But we have been deceived. Lefebvre has not been unaffected. We have felt betrayed seeing him making deals with the Vatican from where all the blows against the true church have come. Although men fail, God cannot fail, nor can he abandon his church. 
It is for this reason that, providentially, and in its proper time, the very illustrious and humble Archbishop of Hugh Vietnam, with his valiant declarations, has presented to all men the disastrous state in which the Church finds herself in God's eyes. He declared the vacancy of the Holy See, and the invalidity of the new Mass, binding himself as a Catholic Archbishop to do for the Church all that he can and ought to do. The Episcopacy was offered to me. I had to think much about it before I could decide. In the end, I accepted it for the sole reason of assisting in the rescue and triumph of the Church. On October 17th, Father Zamora and I were consecrated by Archbishop Took in a virtual catacomb, with only two distinguished doctors as witnesses. Both of us were conscious of the furious storms of protest that would come, but the words of our Divine Master encouraged us. Quote, you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Unquote. On our return to Mexico, the attacks began. Some said, without any foundation, that our consecrations were invalid because we were consecrated with the new rite. Others, more serious, said that based on Canons 953 and 2370, the consecrations were valid but illicit, and that consequently we were suspended. As can be seen, our detractors were ignoring the axiom quicum regula ambulat, tuto ambulat, meaning, he who walks with the rule walks safely. They should remember, if they had forgotten, that Pope Gregory the Ninth left eleven rules and Boniface the Eighth eighty-eight for the true interpretation of the law. These rules, according to Canon 20, can supply the defect of the rule in a particular case, as in the case we presently find ourselves. Consequently, the fourth rule of Gregory the Ninth expressly states, Propter not necessitatem illicitum efficitor licitum. Necessity makes licit what is illicit. The necessity of having Catholic bishops and priests and the lack of true sacraments can easily be seen. Therefore, we were validly and licitly consecrated. Rule 88 of Boniface VIII also expressly states, Certum est quod ist committed in legem qui legem verbum completens contra legis nititur. It is certain that one sins against the rule who adheres to the letter and leaves aside the spirit. Therefore, it is unjust to impute to the legislator a desire to greatly harm the church during a vacancy of the Holy See by forbidding the ordinations of bishops and priests and the administering of the sacraments to the faithful who ask for them. Therefore, in accepting Episcopal consecrations from Archbishop Took, we have relied on these rules, conscious and certain, that given the circumstances in which we live, the consecrations are both valid and licit. We are also conscious and certain that we would have sinned if, by relying on the letter of the law, we had rejected the consecrations, there being only one Catholic bishop who can now be found to transmit the Episcopal succession. Please accept my most sincere affection. I beg God to continue to eliminate you, that you may continue in the battle, defending the rights of Christ and of his church, now so shamelessly offended by those who have the duty of defending them, even if it be at the cost of their lives. Sincerely yours, Moises Carmona, May 18, 1982.